This is a follow-on investment. It's actually an acquisition. A uh, strategic investor put money on a startup, was doing well, and did the first round. They doubled their team. And the hypothesis was, OK, you have a certain speed of development that you see on the, on the white line. And they projected, previous to the investment, they projected a certain speed of development, new features. So you see them accumulating in purple, right? And they pile up as they get delivered. Remember the stories and the bugs and the tasks? They pile up and they say, oh, this is what we're shipping. We're delivering. It's getting done. Uh, but what happened is because of the due diligence process consuming a lot of time through, you know, uh, questionnaires and meetings and all of that, plus they had to hire people, so all the interviews and the recruitment and onboarding, uh, they basically lost a quarter of their development. So you see that the, nothing piles up during Q4. It's just flat and the new features being shipped. And that's when management starts get, getting really you know, angry. It's like, oh, we have more people, but we seem to be slower. What's happening? Yeah, you, you're actually not shipping. You can see that in the data. You can see that in the metric. Then they onboard all these people. They start producing. And lo and behold, they have the same speed as before. So now you have twice the cost. And you're shipping the exact same thing you were before. And you lost a quarter in between. But in your projections, as an investor, you thought, OK, I'm putting more money. They got more people. They're going this speed. Now they're going to go faster. That's the red dotted line going even faster. So what happens is management came to us and said, look, we have this to-do list that's huge. And these guys were supposed to be delivering. And they're not. So we're not sure if we should buy this company anymore. Because we put money on them. And what are they doing? Should we acquire them? So we go in and we get the data. And then we discovered that actually, remember the prioritization process? They put one of their guys as a strategic investor in the company. And this guy's job was to say that everything was a priority. When everything is a priority, nothing is a priority. And then you look at work in progress. These are the things that they're working, trying to finish to ship. It explodes. It's the line in the middle here. So you double the team, but you have six times the number of things that start and stop and they don't get shipped and it's, it's chaos. So the strategic investor, by being heavy handed in the operation, actually made a dysfunctional team. They, they hindered the performance of this team and they didn't even know. They thought we're being hard nosed, we're pa pushing through, but they're making the, the, this guy's life harder. When we look at cycle time, and cycle time is that period when they start the sprint and they're gonna ship. And here we do a quartile distribution. It's a little bit technical, but it's not, it's not hard. And, and the number 18 is what 75% of things get done in up to 18 days, which is roughly two weeks. And usually these sprints, you put 20 to 30% more than you can do on the OKR. So you're pushing people to see if they can deliver more. So that's pretty good. They had a pretty good running company. That's why they attracted the first investment uh, in the first place. But then, you know, you got the, the due diligence, the onboarding process, and now the, the lack of prioritization. And these guys, instead of shipping in two weeks, they're shipping in two months. And again, we're seeing this in the data because they register. That's the story. Start doing the story. It goes back and forth, doesn't finish. It gets completed in two months now instead of two weeks. Now, you look at the code base. And what's interesting is we find a new product is being developed by a small group of very senior developers. And then we go and ask them and say, okay, what's going on? What's this product? And ultimately, the answer is we don't know if we're going to get the following investment because we have a lot of conflict in the board because we're not delivering. and We have this big uh, to-do list that we can't deliver. So we're afraid we're going to not have the acquisition and we're creating a new product in case we need to raise a new uh, round. But the problem is these guys, they're not many, but the guys that know everything. They're the go-to people. So you onboard a bunch of people, they don't know what to do. They want to go talk to Alex. He's all oh, Alex can do. He's doing you know, the submarine project. And now it takes long to do. So this lack of communication and the strategy, the misalignment in the strategy is reflected in the data. And it's not an opinion, it's a fact. And then it's how do you explain the fact? And it becomes a lot more constructive and or destructive. In this case, these guys had a valuation of about $100 million. Uh, because they were so slow, the projection 
of actually delivering this product to new verticals uh, got pushed out. They said they can't deliver what they promised. The products are not going to be there uh, for at least six to nine months. That pushed the whole revenue growth downstream and the exit period and the business plan, the curve gets cut off earlier. And that's, you know, a 43 million loss in value. Okay, they make less money, they pay less tax, so you recover some of the tax. But in the end, you know, you lost almost 30% of this company value because of misalignment between strategy and execution in the code. And that's not something even management would be able to say because if you don't pull the data, you don't know. You, don't, you have a feeling, but you can't really precisely say that's what's going on.